Hi everybody, this video is sponsored by a contribution from Rebecca, and here's her story. Dear Ollie, thank you for your videos, and I hope my contribution isn't too small since my story is likely to get long. I would love your insights into things, though, as it's hard for me to untangle my emotions from the psychological muck in history. I am slowly recovering, I am a slowly recovering victim of narcissistic abuse who is thankful to whatever powers that be to have my husband and his amazing family as well as my children. My, his family showed me what the word actually meant when I had long forgotten it. My story, my story started actually before I met the narc in my life since I believed she capitalized on the situation. You might recall a bit of this story from a video, you don't owe it to anyone to allow the narcissist into your life. You did for me about nine months ago. My mother died when I was six of a heart attack, leaving my father with me and my three brothers. We had already been living with my maternal grandparents in a house they all bought together. Money was tight since my mom had been working to finish school and the area did not offer much in the way of careers for my father. It was a small town in the middle of a cornfield, and so after my mother's death, he decided that he would need to leave in order to find something that paid enough money to support us kids. Since none of us were old enough to manage on our own, and the best he could find was truck driving, he left us with my maternal grandmother, who even though she was already in her 70s and cared for my grandfather, who had trouble moving around, took care of us. The amount of respect and love I have for my grandmother is immeasurable, even more now that I am a parent and understand the struggles raising children. Even more so when I found out that she did not use the social security checks we got for, lo for losing our mother. Instead, she banked those into trust funds that we would get when we turned 20. My father's side of the family helped as much as any of them could though most of them were still setting up their own lives and tending their own children. I still remember family trips, though, where we would be taken with, taken with to amusement parks or camping with aunts, uncles, and cousins. In particular, we grew close with one set of cousins who had lost their father, my dad's brother, to cancer. This will be relevant later. My father was leaving... My father leaving was rough and I did not understand everything when I was a child. He rarely returned home to see us, always seeming to be working. Months would go by without seeing him and sometimes we were lucky to get phone calls. I'm, I'm still not sure if he meant to or not, but the effect on us was the same psychologically. He abandoned us. I'm sure you could imagine the kind of trauma of four kids were going through with no mother due to death and no father due to work, which of course, no play, playground kid ever accepted. I can remember more than once my brothers being punished for beating up other kids because someone thought to pick on one. They were thick as thieves and did everything together. They were all so close in age. They were all so close in age with only a year separating the oldest and middle in 10 months between the middle and youngest brother. I was four years younger than them and being the only girl, quite the pest. They also said I was my grandmother's favorite, which I can agree somewhat with, but having learned about narcissism, I can't say I was the golden child or that my grandma or that my grandmother was a narcissist. I think she might have felt bad for me because I had so many problems. I commonly stayed home in my room playing and only had one or two friends. I was close with I was close with my brothers were all, where my brothers were always running around with the local lost boys as my grandmother called all the neighborhood boys. I was 8 when my father brought a woman named Kathy to meet us. I'm pretty sure she hated me on sight because the first thing out of my mouth to her was to ask her if she was a witch due to having what I thought was a wart on her nose that looked like the Wicked Witch of the West. I remember her kind of staring at me and feeling like I was about to get my butt whooped as Dad said that was rude and I should apologize. She said if I ever came to visit her, 
we would bring out her broom. I thought at that time that meant I would get the fly, but I'm sure she meant it another way entirely. Dad and Kathy dated for about a year, and the entire time Grandpa, to, Grandma disapproved. Growing up, everyone would say it had to be because she did not like my dad replacing Mom. I remember... I remember, though, that my grandmother, my grandma was an excellent judge of character and believed she knew Kathy was a horrible person. For one thing, she knew Kathy had been divorced five times and already had a son. My dad got, my dad and Kathy got married on sweetest day before a judge and none of us attended. We're pretty sure it was because Kathy was pregnant, although we were never told she was at the time and she maintains that was not last I knew. Although married, we were not brought up to where they, were, where they lived outside of Chicago. We lived outside of St. Louis all my life at this point, right away. I called that, I, I can recall dad calling grandma having horrible yelling matches with him over the phone. All any of us kids heard was her yelling that he had to come get us. Growing up, the situation was always painted that Grandma was throwing us out or forcing Dad and Kathy to take us before they were ready as they were trying to find a bigger house to hold us all in their budget. Kathy was still in school and waitressed at night. My dad was on the road often and moving us all, including her son, around into a small three-bedroom house with one bath was not exactly idea, ideal. However, I can't imagine my grandmother who would take on four kids in that old age doing that. Talking it over with my therapist, I've come to believe that Kathy was trying to get my dad to abandon us again, but grandma was not having it. That kind of scenario makes sense to my mind, more given the personalities of all involved and their actions towards us later. We moved up north a few weeks before I turned 10, but not before we were told to, to pick what to pack and then watch the rest of our things get sold off at an auction. I remember not understanding things until one of my toys was being sold and then bursting into tears screaming. Kathy just wrinkled her nose and told me it was just things while my grandmother tried to comfort me and explain that there wasn't room for everything. She let me pick one more item from my old things and take it with, but I couldn't take any more and accepted this, though I was upset still. Why would they watch you? Why would they sell your toys in front of you? Things weren't too bad originally when we moved. I remember Kathy talk, taking me out to eat and shop, although we never bought anything for me just for herself. I can recall one instance where she was going over fur coats and asking my opinion. I told her they looked ugly and we shouldn't kill animals for fur when we, when we could just get them from plants and sheep. I think she was trying to get a feel for me and quickly this treatment stopped, likely when I proved not to be, her, be a mini her. Go figure. At this time, she was pregnant, and we all still lived in the three-bedroom house. My brothers were all in their teens now, 16, 15, and 14, and commonly ran wild, not the least bit interested in her rules over them. Dad was still driving the truck, so she was commonly left to all five of us, including her own baby boy, who was also 10, and commonly yelled at us for being animals. All four older boys were jammed in one room, although my stepbrother James often would go to sleep on the couch because he didn't like sharing a room. I was the only one to have a room to myself until the baby boy came along. My youngest brother, Robbie, who became what I call a self-aware golden child. I remember often he would cry at night and I would be told to go to sleep on the couch since he was in my room and keeping me up. That, of course, if James had not claimed the couch, which led to fighting and Kathy constantly telling him to stay in the room with the rest of the boys. The days in the tiny house were chaotic and rough. 
I had no friends in the area and commonly stayed closed up in my room, entertaining myself with stories I made up using paper dolls and whatever toys I had to keep from going nuts. When I did pop out, it was usually because we had something we had to do. Chores, for example, were divided up among the kids, and I can't say I ever saw Kathy do anything but boss someone around. She would commonly say, I didn't make this mess, so you kids can clean it up. She also left the baby with my older brothers to care for. Before the birth, she managed to finish college and become an accountant and worked at a daycare center so she could have free babysitting. When she came home, though, she would feed us, then retreat to her room to watch her soap operas that she taped over the day or go out to her bowling league. Saturdays, she was always out with her mother for craft shows, and Sundays, she would drag me and James out to help her with grocery shopping, which was, which was us having to push the heavy carts and get the things she named off her list while she stood there looking important. All of this was, of course, after she spent most of the morning, except work days, laying around and getting dressed up as if she was going to impress someone. Kathy had three rings on each hand, usually two to three necklaces, earrings, and her hairstyle, all real gold jewelry because she had an allergy. Eventually, we found another house and moved. My three older brothers were put into a loft while James was put into the basement where my dad made a wall so he had his own room. James, however, never stayed in it, instead opting to ooze out and pretty much claim the entire floor over the years. I was ecstatic at first, thinking I would have my own room again, but was told that my littlest brother was still going to be staying with me in my room on the ground floor, just down the hall from my parents' room. And then there was the kitchen, dining room, and what we kids called the adult room, which was a living room that we were forbidden to go into unless Kathy expressed permission, which was usually when someone had to clean it. All during this time, us four original kids were sent down to visit my maternal grandpa pretty regularly. Contact with that side of the family dwindled to just Thanksgiving, and that was if we went to visit. After my grandpa died, though, my grandma would come visit us since, since that we had less money on everyone and easier than shipping us four around. During one of these visits, though, things exploded with me at the center. My stepbrother and I had done something that warranted swats with my dad's belt. For some reason, however, it was decided that my dad and Kathy, it was decided by my dad and Kathy that I needed extra ones. I don't remember what the reasons were. I just remembered that I was sentenced to more. When my grandmother, when my grandma caught this, she protested saying I did not deserve that, specifically yelling at my dad for doing this. Kathy, however, took exception to things. The yelling went on for a long time, and I still don't know the whole situation. The, in, in the end, my grandma was banned from the house, and we were told we would only be allowed to visit her two weeks out of the year. One for each long school break, winter and summer. If we were good and did as we were told. Years later, I heard grandma supposedly insulted Kathy to her own narc mother but I can't say how true this is. I believe Kathy wanted my grandma out of the way because she was considered a threat. I was very depressed after things had got, and things just got worse. My, old, my oldest brother at one point told Kathy off and left the house, intended to backpack to my grandma's house and stay with her. My other two brothers, middle and the youngest of the original three brothers, also bucked her authority but stayed though they ignored any and all rules she tried to place on them. My understanding later is that they both felt they had to stay because they were the primary caretakers for the youngest of us, Robbie. It was only after high school that either of them left with, left with Robbie in kindergarten. I then became the emotional caretaker for him until I left. For myself, I started to go to a nearby Catholic middle school. Kathy, believing the discipline there would shape me up as my grades plummeted due to the depression. The next three years were what I call hell years. 
every day I would get up, go to school, be tormented by bullies for being the poor trucker's daughter. Teachers pitied me, and the nun that was the principal hated me on sight. I think she was a narc, too, that disliked that I ruined her image of a pretty and wonderful school, uh, courtesy of all the bullying. While in middle school, it started to become apparent to me that my stepmother was not normal and not the normal mother I had been hoping for. Not because of the bullying about my greasy hair and faded uniform, but because the teachers were starting to frown and say things. The best instance of this was when I came home to Kathy screaming at me. Apparently, she had gotten a call from the nun who received complaints that I was not wearing a bra. I was already well endowed, although I didn't know it. She demanded to know why I was changing in front of other girls and not using a bathroom stall and did not believe me when I explained there was more girls than stalls and we had limited time to get ready. She just threw some older bras at me and told me to start wearing them. There was no explaining what they were, what the me measurements were, how to adjust them how to adjust them, where they should sit, just hands me, just hand me, to, just hand me downs tossed at me and orders to wear them. I suffered much of the same when I started having my period. I was terrified because I had ruined underwear and pants and started to sneak pads from her stash. It was not the brightest idea since I was the only other girl in the house, so I was shortly caught and screamed at for not coming to her in the first place and asking for them. The worst, though, was certainly when one of the teachers noticed my dress clothes were, were worn and starting to look bad. She bought me a brand new outfit and made me try it on in the bathroom real quick to make, it, make sure it fit. She claimed the entire time that it was something she had bought her niece, and since it didn't fit, she thought I could use it. I loved the style and was happy about it as the teacher helped me hide it from the other, other kids until school was over so I did not get picked on. Needless to say, I came home excited and got a beating from Kathy for conning someone into some new things. She screamed at me about being a, being a thief and a con artist, but, not, but, but let me keep the outfit, which would insist in public to others she got me, but then I had learned wisely to shut up and not say anything. No, 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 you got that all wrong. Okay. Kathy, okay, is looking to blame you for her own failures. That's what this is about. It's not about you conning anybody. She didn't really believe you conned anybody. It's her way of, of you of keeping you quiet from taking this to the next step and spilling the beans to this to this teacher or somebody who helps you is now a threat. But she can't take the outfit from you because then the teacher's going to want to know what happened to the outfit. And then she's going to have to explain it. This is all psychological terrorism. My state of mind, though, was definitely easy to see, though. I learned later that my dad's side could see, and I was not, could see I was not doing well. And my aunt, who, whose kids were all grown, offered to take me in since the family was having a hard time. My dad refused the offer, though, claiming that everything was fine. At some point in middle school, something clicked in my brain that Kathy was just wrong. I think it was after I had hidden away enough of Kathy's sleeping pills that I started to think I could actually manage to die. I often wanted to hear the fear of Kathy's wrath if I did not succeed in said suicide always stopped me. Yes, you read that right. I was so convinced I was a screw up and feared my narc so much that I was certain that suicide would lead to no pain and relief. This was the youngest of my three musketeer brothers getting me hooked on reading like likely saved my life. <clears throat> I 
Having an escape was a blessing and a curse. Kathy would often take things away from me to punish me. And after having nothing but books and a radio for three years, she started taking books from me. To keep sanity, I retreated back to what I used to do as a child. I made up stories, and this time I started writing them down. I also would turn to art and singing. In high school, I tried to follow art and music, but Kathy always, but, but Kathy was always quick to put things down and make sure I never had time or ability to pursue any avenues. The abuse against me got worse in high school. My three older brothers were now all out of the house, and my stepbrother had always fought back against his mother. They would have what I call, what I now call, narcoffs. I'm pretty sure James resented losing his status of golden child and targeted me since he couldn't get revenge against my older brothers or Robbie, the new golden child. He made my life hell as often as he could and often informed me informed on me to Kathy to get me get himself out of trouble. For instance, one time he was in trouble for something and slipped in the rumor that I was pregnant, even though I was not sexually active and didn't even have a boyfriend yet in my life. Go figure, having three older brothers made it hard to have guys be interested. She took it as true, though, and I was called in and interrogated and screamed at. She loved calling me a whore since the nun called about the bra. With James fighting Kathy, she would constantly give him what she wanted to get him off her, usually at my expense. These instances, the instances of this are numerous. In middle school, James opted to get a piper out, but then decided not to do it. So I was given it as if I wanted it. She then screamed at me when I tried to quit. I ended up making them fire me in order to escape the job, and she was livid about it. I was 13 and never saw the money anyway, as she would take it and put it in the bank for me. Oh, boy, did I hear that a lot. All my paper route money was taken in the bank, never saw it. This happened again with another paper route that my brother took up, but I was expected to accept when he no longer wanted it. This one, however, I got to collect the money on. Customers com commonly wrote a check on, on the paper and gave me a cash tip, which I would pocket, so I had a little money to do something with. Kathy always suspected but never caught my little embezzlement. Possessions, however, are not, as you know, don't matter to an arc. One fight, James wanted money for a car so he could get to work, which was a crock. He had dropped out of high school, although he, still, he was still in GED courses that he liked to ignore, and was working construction with a friend of his. He claimed he needed a car to get to and from work because he could never get up in time, on time to meet his friend for a ride. Instead of telling him tough, she gave him my bank account, every penny that I had earned, and told me he would, he would pay me back. I actually told her I didn't want him taking the money, and she told me I wasn't doing anything with it, so it didn't matter. Never mind, she never allowed me out of the house in the first place, and never let me manage my own money to begin with. I knew, though, that I was never going to see my money again. Sure enough, James bought the car, and it turned out to be a piece of junk that didn't even get him a block away from the guy he bought it at. Two weeks after that, he was fired for his job for not showing up for work. The only surprising thing of the situation is that Dad stood up for me. He was never around usually and never sided and never sided or was interested in hearing what us kids had to say. So this was something of a shock. He threatened my stepmother with a divorce if she did not put the money back into my account that day. She complied with and things went back to how they were. Me being the indentured servant cleaning the house and going to school while staying hidden in my head art and music being mocked while I hid my writing in the back of a school notebooks that she wouldn't that she wouldn't take away. <clears throat> Although I, I was rarely allowed out, I did manage to make a few friends at school. My best friend Steph during my senior year of high school started off telling her mom, Kim, about my situation, and Kim realized something was wrong. On a random chance one time when I was talking to Steph, on the phone, Kim asked if I would leave given the chance. When I said yes, she offered me a place to stay in the plot 
and we began plotting my escape. I didn't breathe a word of it to anyone, least James or Kathy find out two weeks after I turned 18, after Kathy let go, left to go to craft shows with her mother, like she always did. Friends arrived and started packing up my things in the car. Dad was home that day, and I remember being terrified that he would stop me, but surprisingly, he didn't. He even made sure I took my birth certificate and Social Security card with me and told me to call Social Security folks so they would start sending my mother's checks to wherever I landed instead of here. I learned that one of my brothers heard Kathy call those checks her paycheck for dealing with us. Though my plan was sound and there had been one Though my plan was sound, there had been one thing I thought I was going to lose. My bank account was set up so that even though I could take money out, which they would alert Kathy about, I could not close the account even though I was 18. Thinking that the money was a lost cause, I left it, but Kathy never touched it. My dad threatening to divorce her if she took my money, which was the first thing she was going to do when she learned I had ran away again. I had ran away two other times before with no success. Finally, I was free, although I knew nothing still about going no contact or narcissism. The silent treatment came and the flying monkeys were everywhere on me the next day. My grandmother called me at my new number and tried to give me support, even though she was losing her mind to Alzheimer's and living, and living in a home. Years passed by with little activity since Kathy could no longer do anything to me. We did start talking again because I did not understand the situation and truth. Even as I grew and scrambled to survive, I never turned to them for help. My dad did, however, on occasion try to help me a few times, but always in minor ways like taking me to get a state ID. I had limited contact with my family as all of us kids tried to build up lives and Kathy moved from bully tactics to triangulation to get their supply with limited success since we all scattered. My oldest brother lives about an hour from her with his wife, who Kathy despises for whatever reason. Behind their back, she always paints them to be these welfare-sucking idiots who needed to stop having kids. While I will admit my brother has a lot of kids, five in total, they do not have welfare and currently are working to have his wife put on disability due to her CRPS, a nervous disorder that caused her extreme pain. They still see my dad and Kathy, but both of them would rather just see my dad and tolerate her only so their children and my brother can have some kind of relationship with him. She has, she has tried to turn them into flying monkeys against me, but my sister-in-law decided to ask me about her lies instead of taking whatever Kathy has said as truth. Beyond that, we don't talk about my dad and Kathy because they respect I have no wish to have anything to do with them. My little brother of the three musketeers joined the army and only recently retired. Kathy loved to pick on him forever about never being around to visit, and then his wife, who was bipolar, and decided to stop her treatments. He's had a rough time of it, as have his children, who my husband and I took in for a year while he was deployed. She always seemed angry about this, but I never understood why since she was dealing with her mother having cancer at the time and couldn't handle two children as well, in particular ones that had already dealt with a lot of trauma from their mother. I believe it was because she wanted to have more dirt to shove on my brother. She loved to start trash-talking their mother in front of them, even after I called her out on it a few times, and would ignore them when she insists on visits, leaving them to Robbie, who was still living with her, so he could finish college. As far as I know, he doesn't talk to Kathy unless he has to, and it's usually for money. Recently, though, he started coming back to my husband and me for funding to get his business off the ground. Apparently, we are much better about it than she is, and give, in, and give more. <clears throat> My youngest three musketeer escaped via partying. All of us 
out of all of us, he was the one that dove into the drug culture and was always drunk. He somehow managed to be functional, though, and get a degree. He now lives in Vegas, and his lifestyle and education help him run two or three clubs out there. Kathy constantly belittles his accomplishments and harps on about him not having a wife. I think he actually enjoys riling her up, though. Whenever he gets gets the chance, he'll point out why our logic is flawed and generally call out, call her on her shit. While he doesn't talk to any of us on a regular basis, he's definitely he definitely is not lost in Kathy's lives. James lived with her for years on and off. They have a cycle where they make up their best buddies, try to do something together, fight and stop talking to each other. As far as I know, the cycle continues, but I have not talked to him or her for over three years now. Robbie is working on his own escape plan. He knows his mother is not right in the head, and he admits it. I try not to trash her to him, though, because she is unfortunately his mother. She has given him shit over continuing to have a relationship with me and leaving the house, which he has put, which has put her in her place ver verbally, often on, often on, and told her that whatever fight her and I are having is between her and I. He is, however, still a sucker for her manipulation. Anything we invite him to, he is commonly late for due to her deciding that some project must be done and he stays to help dad. Last one was my oldest son's birthday, which he was late because Kathy wanted a fence put up over the weekend. She did not appreciate his comeback that professionals can do that, but he stayed to help my dad. <clears throat> As for myself, she has not spoken to me since I, I attempted to have Christmas at my house instead of her hold court of her own. While we were watching my nephews during my Army's brother's deployment, we requested them coming out to our house. After being told that couldn't happen because her mother couldn't handle stairs, never mind that their house, she had to climb up the same number of steps to get to the place, and Kathy loved hosting parties. I then asked if we, come, if, if we could come on another day since my husband had to work the next day. Eventually, they asked for Christmas Eve, which is, a special, which is usually spent with my husband's family. I told them I would check and get back to them, which apparently caused Kathy to flip out. She called me up screaming about how we bent over backwards for my husband's family, but never for them, which frankly I have no idea what she's talking about. She also accused me of being put up to things and yelled at and yelled about how my dad deserved to see those children, which obviously she meant my brothers and not mine. I have not spoken to her since, although I have to admit being more than a little pleased when we both ended up at a wedding on my dad's side of the family and she had to live through the live through the whole of them calling me Saint Becky for the for the treatment of my nephews and making it a point to visit family and friends to visit family with them. I'm sure you can imagine the looks she shot me. My biggest challenge to date, though, is my father. I followed your advice about writing him a letter and had Robbie deliver it to him so my stepmom could get a hold of him. I never got a response from him, but he got the letter in early December. When I visited my oldest brother later that month, my sister-in-law asked me about some behaviors that my stepmom, that from my stepmom, that were confusing to her. For one that her and my dad had come to their house for Christmas instead of the normal demand of them coming of coming to them. Also, that, that my stepmother had bought an expensive game system for their kids instead of her normal habit of buying dollar store toys for the lot. My husband and I said we think she is trying to buy them off since we were a threat and she's wanting to make make sure someone agrees with her about my vicious evil traits. I wish my oldest brother would accept that our father abandoned us 
and I would love to know how the rest of my brothers feel on matters, but I'm not sure how to talk to them about this. None of us are good at sharing our feelings, thanks to the Narc Queen there. Any pointers on that would be helpful, along with insight into my background. Thank you so much, Ollie. Hope you're, you and your wife are doing well. Rebecca. Wow. Well, first, it seems like your letter might have gotten a point across, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Because your father does have the ability to step in and put Kathy in check whenever he decides to. You know, your background is simple, you know. I can't get into your father's head with the truck driving, but look, truck driving is a huge industry in America, and everybody knows truckers spend a lot of time on the road. I think the thing with the money being put back into your account is guilt and regret for your father saddling you guys with Kathy but you don't have the balls to do anything about it. Kathy is just a spoiled little bitch. She sees you as the main threat as the female, obviously. But you got away. I mean, you were able to get out pretty early, even though you went through some horrible things. See, Kathy knows she's a horrible person. Kathy knew she was abusing you. That's why she acted the way she did when she would get calls from the school and the nun, okay? Not, let me get you a bra, hide your body. Like, why do I, if, if I'm, it's disgusting. And that response should tell you everything you need to know about Kathy. I mean, she forgets what school is like and she wants you to go into a bathroom stall. So, I mean, come on, man. As far as your brothers go, I, who knows? Hard to say. I would keep the ones that are in your life and I would build from there. I mean, you can't worry about everybody. You gotta worry about yourself and what's best for you. You know, but never go back to Kathy again because she has a lot to atone for. A lot to atone for another wicked evil stepmother so thank you for your contribution thank you for your story <clears throat> thank you to everybody watching please leave any advice or opinions in the comment section below and again if you want your story read on the channel you have a topic you'd like me to cover or a narcissist you'd like to expose you know what to do with the paypal and my email links in the description box i'll have the video right back to you this is ali matthews thanks for watching see you all again soon